From heavy rain and severe flooding across South America to scorching temperatures and drought conditions in the Horn of Africa, the weather pattern known as El Nino is cutting a devastating path across the globe. In Africa, around 31 million people are said to be facing food shortages, with over 10 million Ethiopians projected to require humanitarian assistance. And in Southeast Asia, countries are leaving fields and rice paddies unplanted due to severe hot and dry conditions. All this as prices in such commodities as sugar, vegetable oils, cocoa and dairy products have already gone up. Later, we'll go in-depth with our panel about the cause and effects of El Nino, but first, here's CCTV's Sean Calebs. From the air, it's difficult to see how brutal the weather has been on crops in many parts of Africa. But a closer look at the soil tells the real story. We're trying to produce the crop uh, and make it so that there's enough food for the country. And, and in this case, we, we can't do it because this, it's a massive drought. A mess of a drought caused by El Nino, a weather system simply going haywire. And really what we're talking about here is sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific. When those are above normal, especially just off the coast of South America, it can tend to have a ripple effect on the overall pattern across the entire globe. This is what it looks like on the satellite. The glowing red band on the equator represents water warmed about two degrees Celsius above normal. El Nino is causing both drought and downpours in different parts of the world. Warmer water means extra energy in the atmosphere in Asia and Central and South America. From powerful waves off the coast of Peru to devastating storms in Malaysia. When we look at predicting El Nino in advance, we can predict with a reasonably good accuracy six months to even a year in advance whether El Nino will hit or not. It's really predicting the intensity of El Nino that's difficult. This year's El Nino is the most powerful in decades. China suffered through its hottest year ever. Drought in Ethiopia is leading to the death of livestock while crops rot in the field. Bone dry conditions in parts of Africa are expected to leave millions facing extreme hunger, forcing aid organizations into high gear. Out of 10 million people now requiring urgent humanitarian assistance, the World Food Program is expected to support the government in meeting the needs of 7.6 million people in 2016. But that is only part of the equation. Aiding more than 7.5 million is the goal right now, but there are only enough supplies to help out 5% of those in need. El Nino is a weather condition that usually drags on most of the year. The good news is meteorologists are expecting El Nino to release its grip as spring approaches. But at the same time, humanitarian groups are warning if they don't mobilize soon, millions of people in drought-stricken areas will be facing a worsening crisis. Anand? Thanks, Sean. That's CCTV's Sean Caleb's reporting. Joining us now from the United Kingdom, where he serves as a senior lecturer and economics fellow at the University of Cambridge, is Kamia Mohades. With us from New York is Gerald Burke. He's a senior communications officer with the United Nations World Food Program. Roxy Matthew Cole joins us from Mumbai. He's a climate scientist with the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And with us here in Washington is the director of science and solutions at the Climate Reality Project, Ryan Tao. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Ryan, let me start with you. We saw a bit in that report about what El Nino is, a band of warm water across the equatorial Pacific. But what causes it? Is it caused by human activity or is it a naturally occurring phenomenon? It's a natural cycle. Uh, it tends to occur every two to seven years and it's a warming of the central and eastern Pacific waters, um, warmer than normal, and it has global implications on weather patterns, changes weather patterns across the globe. But even though it's not caused by human uh, or man-made conditions, it certainly is occurring on a cl changed climate system. Um, the, the Earth's atmosphere has warmed nearly a degree Celsius over the past 100 years. So El Nino is occurring on top of uh, global warming. Right, we've been talking a lot in the past few months about climate change. Let's go to Roxy in Mumbai. Roxy, we talk about climate change, we talk about rising temperatures across the world, we talk about the greenhouse gas effect. What is the connection between climate change and El Nino? If you, if you look at the amount of heat absorbed by the uh, 
um, air system components, ocean absorbs more than 90% of the heat. And if you combine the other air system components like land, atmosphere, and the ice, it comes to less than 10% of the heat absorbed uh, by the air system components. So that means the ocean acts as a reservoir of heat. And El Nino act as a, uh, act as a way for this ocean to throw out this heat into the climate system. Cameo, what kind of economic impact is El Nino having, particularly on the production of food, because it's been causing droughts in places and it's been causing flooding in other places? Yeah, absolutely. So what we observe in, for instance, Australia is that the severity and frequency of uh, bushfires increase. And, uh, uh, well, obviously then wheat exports fall and there is upward pressure on uh, global wheat prices. Similar uh, in New Zealand, we have drought in places that are uh, dry already and we have uh, flooding in other places, which reduces agricultural production. As was mentioned, in India, it usually coincides with a weak monsoon uh, and rising temperatures, which has uh, significant implications for the Indian agricultural uh, industry and sector and uh, we observe basically an increase in domestic food prices in India. It has also implications for not just the Asia Pacific region. We, we noticed that South Africa there is a, a, a drought uh, currently which increases uh, uh, pressure on domestic uh, food prices but also global prices of food uh, and commodities in general, raw materials, minerals. A good example is Indonesia where the uh, drought, the uh, the lack of rainfall and and uh, rising temperatures basically re reduces coffee and cocoa production and drives up those prices. But uh, the lack of uh, rain and the low river currents in Indonesia also has also implications for minerals. Uh, Indonesian uh, metal industry relies heavily on hydropower and and with less rain, what we observe is that uh, metal production, in particular nickel production, drops and there is a, a surge in uh, metal prices. Gerald, this pressure on food food supplies, uh, where is the UN seeing its worst effects? Uh, we're seeing it all over, in fact. Vast numbers of people across the, the, the globe are affected by, by the current El Nino, uh, and our understanding is that it at least matches the strongest El Nino on record. So being felt uh, all across the globe, um, Southern Africa, as was mentioned, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Eastern Africa, um, Southern Africa. Um, so huge impacts being felt mainly as drought, uh, but also in some places as rainfall, uh, bringing, bringing flooding. So, so we're very concerned. Tens of millions of people at risk, tens of millions already vulnerable people. If I can take one example, uh, Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia is currently facing its worst drought for 50 years. Uh, the number of food insecure people there is estimated at 10 million. Uh, and that's a threefold increase on 12 months ago. Uh, Southern Africa, uh, huge concerns there too. Ryan, as we just heard, El Nino is having very varied effects. It's not just one thing that happens. I mean, in some parts of the world, there's flooding. In other parts of the world, there's drought. Why does that happen? Well, El Nino impacts atmospheric circulations. And globally, you can have a storm system or a series of storm systems that are sort of stuck in a certain area. So it really is shifts the global weather patterns and some areas are favored to see in an El Nino event uh, wet conditions and maybe wet conditions that last several months to possibly a year. Why? Well, other areas of the globe will see dry conditions and possibly drought. So uh, El Nino typically has certain impacts across certain areas of the globe. Uh, we know from past history that Southeast Asia, for instance, and Northern Australia will typically see warmer and drier conditions. Uh, the west coast of the U.S., California, where they've experienced this multi-year drought, typically will see stormier conditions as a result of El Nino. So it's a changing of weather patterns, and the change of weather patterns typically lasts several months, which means the weather that they are seeing, the stormy condition, may last for several months, and then, of course, you're talking about flooding potential. Yeah, you mentioned California. Uh, we are seeing a drought there, but are we seeing rainfall in places that normally don't get a lot of rainfall? Uh, we're seeing more rainfall into parts of the desert southwest, certainly more than they would typically see. That area, too, has experienced a multi-year drought, so conditions are slowly improving, so water availability is certainly improving as a result of this El Nino. 
Roxy, uh, if we look at India, India's Weather Bureau is forecasting that there will be weaker rainfall this year, and that is being blamed on El Nino. Uh, what does this do to the country's agricultural industry? And you know, if you have weaker rainfall in a time like the monsoons when you have most of your rainfall? We already had uh, two draws uh, in a line. Uh, this is uh, one of the rarest of events. And in fact, the past 15 years, we had uh, f five, draws, uh, five draws among these past 15 years. That has been huge. And surely, uh, almost 75% of the uh, rural, rural population depend on uh, rainfed agriculture. And that is going to have a tremendous impact on the agriculture and the livelihood of the people. Uh, but for the next year, for the coming year, uh, uh, we are expecting that the El Nino will slow down by uh, early spring, late spring, and which will go into La Nina-like conditions, which might enhance the monsoon. For the, so for the next monsoon, we are hopeful that uh, it will be bountiful. Cameo, uh, we saw that El Nino in 97 and 98 claimed something like 23,000, well, led to 23,000 deaths. Poverty rates increased in parts of the world by 15%. And we're hearing right now from organizations like NASA that we haven't seen the worst of this yet. Uh, what can we expect? There are parts of the world where, uh, obviously, we, uh, we notice that there is a decline in uh, economic activity. There are droughts, as was mentioned. There are food insecurity. And uh, we, you know, uh, as, as I mentioned, Australia, for instance, Indonesia, uh, South Africa. We have in Latin America, where there has been uh, below average rain between March and September of this year, millions of people are uh, in uh, food, in, have, are f food insecure. Um, so there, there are massive consequences for these economies uh, and so and for the emerging market economies in general in, in the Asia Pacific uh, we expect that uh, uh, an El, El, Nino, El Nino year generally means lower uh, ec economic activity um, but uh, there are parts of the world, some advanced economies, some uh, which are directly affected by the El Ninos, and some are which are not directly affected by the, uh, by the El Nino, which generally sees a boost in economic activity. So it was mentioned that California, there is more rain in California, more rain in the south of the U.S. Uh, there, there are, uh, there's, uh, you know, the more uh, uh, rain in Argentina, for instance, and this boosts economic activities in these countries. Me in Mexico, we see less. Uh, 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 less uh, hurricanes in the East Coast. Uh, in Canada, is warmer weather, increasing returns to fisheries. So this boosts economic activity generally in these uh, economies.